Okay, and you're back in Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I'm sorry it's been a bit of a while since I've done a video. I just haven't really had much to do videos with. You know, project-wise. So I thought I'd revisit the Tesla coil stuff again. Because I just find this stuff fascinating. Anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to build an interrupted solid state tester coil and we're going to see how well that works and then we're going to come to back to this and we're going to try and run this off full voltage without any ballast to the transformer so it should be running on the full 120 volts or so and my memory card is getting full so I better just get all this edited now so I can put some more video on this camera built up this circuit here of an interrupted solid state tester coil and I'm happy to say that it does actually work I'm going to turn it on this is why I'm filming in the dark now hopefully it's not going to scrub the camera so I'm going to sit way far back from this thing excuse the miss on my bed I'll just zoom up on the breakout point there now at the moment it's not doing much As you can see, there's barely anything there. But now, I'm going to put on a different breakout point. Make sure this thing is well and truly off before I do this. There we go. And this will actually shoot out, strange enough, with this breakout point, it shoots out longer sparks. Well, that's pretty good. One thing that I'm sure a lot of people get a little bit confused about when making this, and I certainly did, is how the primary is connected. So I'm just going to go through how that's connected right now. The primary is made out of ordinary mains cable. It's got two wires here, as you can see the, the brown and the blue wire, they go to the positive of the supply. The brown and the blue wire on the other end go into one side of this capacitor that I've made out of several other capacitors. And that brown and blue wire also goes to the MOSFET collector, I mean MOSFET drain. And this other wire here, this green and yellow wire, this side of it goes to negative, as you can see, it's on the negative side. And the other side of that wire, that green and yellow wire, goes to the other side of the capacitor and into this diode, which you can see is one side of the diode is connected to the positive and the other side is connected to the coil. Anyway, I've got this tuned a little bit and I've got the magnetic coupling tuned as best as I can. Seems to give the best spark length. And I know that Changing the breakout point is going to change the top load capacitance. I'm not stupid. I do realize that's going to affect the resonant frequency. Now I've got the tuning just about where I think is good. About where I think is the best. So this is the kind of output we get now. Oh, I've also added a capacitor to the thing so it pulses slower. It's looking pretty good now. Anyway, I want to change these capacitors here because I think using a couple of low voltage, high capacitance capacitors in series isn't the very, isn't the best thing because of the ESR, the, the combined ESR. So I'm going to use four low value, high voltage capacitors. I didn't quite have the capacitors I thought I had, so I've used six 470 microfarad capacitors. A couple of them read a bit lower than they should. So I've got about 2500 microfarad, or 2.5 millifarad if you want to be a bit more scientific about it. With the capacitors in parallel like this, it's going to put more oomph into each pulse. So that should be, you know, it's going to put more amps into it. That is, if the power supply can keep the caps charged, can get the caps charged quick enough for each pulse, but we'll see. 
Okay then. Turn this on and see what we got. Alright. Not if the camera can see that. I think the tuning might have drifted a little bit. I just need to adjust it. Let's make it a bit. Turn the frequency up a little. Yeah. We stick the other capacitor in there to make it a bit slower. Okay, so I've got two capacitors, so it should be slower. Alright, connect. There we go. Alright, let me just get this tuning. Let's see what we get now. That other capacitor is beginning to annoy me now. Now would you believe it? That capacitor is still not connected. You will connect, or you'll die! Lightning time! Now this is my impression of um, somebody whose name will not go mentioned. Oh my god! I just couldn't help myself. I had to try something different. Let's just try adjusting the tuning a little. I really hope the camera's picking that up and not making the arcs look tiny because I'm getting good, like, over two inch sparks off that. I've added a breakout point and now the sparks are bigger. Also, I've put this little meter here to measure how much the power fluctuates and I've calibrated it so it's 60 volts. It's right on that dividing line, so when I turn it on, you can see it barely moves. But I know you want to see the sparks instead, so let's see the sparks. People with a fear of lightning need not apply. Well, they were bigger. Oh, let me just move this, because it's not making very good contact. Yeah! Just kidding. And move that camera around a bit. I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Let me just adjust the tuning a little. Okay. Maybe that was a little too far the other way. Like I said, people with a fear of lightning need not be here. And now we're going to do the solid state tester coil. Strangely enough, it doesn't seem to work too well with the Coke can top load, so I have to use this one instead. But it works good enough. So this is ballasted, full power. Okay, pretty good. I'm sure I saw something glowing in there. Oh no, I didn't, it was just a reflection. 
The trouble is, people like, you know, they get afraid when I do this kind of stuff, because, you know, they, um, they think I'm dangerous and I'm going to kill myself one day. But, you know, just look at it. It's really beautiful. Alright, just testing the heat. Making sure nothing's getting hot. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Okay, so we're about to try this without any ballast through this transformer. But just to remind you, this is how it is when it's running ballasted. Alright. That's about 83 volt supply. And we're getting like two and a half inch sparks. So now, I'm just going to unplug the transformer. And plug in my little plug that eliminates the ballast. So instead of a ballast, I've got a plug that just goes straight across. So we'll have the full voltage from the transformer going into the Tesla coil. Alright, so here we go. Alright, so that was completely unballasted. Well, strangely enough, that was only 105 volts. I thought we were going to get a little bit more out of that. Okay, now some of you have commented in saying you want to see this running half wave rectified. So, I've gone and connected the full bridge rectifier in a way that it's only using one diode. So now, we can see what this is going to look like half wave rectified. Unballasted, of course. I think this is going to look quite like a vacuum tube tester coil. Yeah, pretty much what I thought. People with a fear of lightning need not apply. Hmm. Don't know why it's going straight up, but... And now, I run without me talking. Uh, I just couldn't help it. I had to marvel at it. It's very hard to hold this camera steady and do the calculator at the same time. So with 105 volt supply times 1.41, that means the DC voltage going into the circuit is actually almost 150 volts. Okay. Pretty much 148 volts, but you know, we could round that off to 150. I'm going to call this one a success. And also, this one down here is also a success. Just so you know. Okay, well I've just been going through the footage of the, I um, guess you could call it the lightning producer Tesla coil, and I've noticed something kind of interesting. Now, right here, on this frame right here, just before the strike happens, you can actually see the channel of ionized air where the strike is going to appear. And one frame later, there's the strike. So you can see it's not instant. And if we go a little further onto the video, there's the channel of ionized air again. And then when the strike happens, you can see it starts right there at the breakout point and just propagates along because in the next frame, it's moved out. So I thought that was a... Uh, you know, kind of interesting and bring that up. So there we go, that's the end of this video. A tale of two Tesla coils, two drivers, one secondary, or whatever you want to call it. And for your viewing pleasure, there we are. The schematics of the two Tesla coils. This is the interrupted solid state Tesla coil. Don't know what language that is, I think that's Czechoslovakian. Doesn't matter though, because I speak the universal language of electronics. And of course, over here, is the schematic of the PLL Tesla coil, with all the mistakes that I made in the schematic now corrected. Anyway, later on, I'm going to see if I can run this off 240 volt mains. All I need to do is replace these two um, transistors here. I'm going to say maybe IRFP 460s, I think that should do the trick just fine. And then that, sh that thing should really throw out some sparks then. But that's going to be for another video because this is getting too long already, so yep, until next time, goodbye.